And here's our lesson on adding and subtracting rational expressions. Adding and subtracting rational expressions is going to be very similar to adding and subtracting fractions. In, uh, in my experience as a teacher, this is one of the things that kids absolutely love doing. Okay, so when we throw some algebra in it, you should really, really like doing it. So we have two objectives here. First one is to do exactly what the title says, add and subtract some rational expressions. And then number two, we're going to deal with something called complex fractions. We're going to simplify complex fractions. It's pretty simple. Uh, like what it is, it's a fraction within a fraction. You can have fractions within fractions within fractions. Oh my. Okay. So um, let's start off here by warm up one F, one fraction. Um, just simply add these two fractions. How do you add two fractions? Well, if they have the same denominator, you keep it the same, and you just add up the tops of those. So this should be, just add these up. Uh, four and a little three plus seven is ten. Keep the same denominator as four, and then if you can, you can reduce it. Well, both of these are divisible by two, so I'd have five over two, and that would be my answer. So, when adding fractions that have like denom denominators, you keep that denominator the same, and you just add up the numerators. Okay. All right. Now, let's. Do the same kind of thing except for with algebraic expressions. So warm up one R. R rational expressions. Look, the denominators are the same. If the denominator is the same, we keep it the same. And that is x plus 4. And just add up the two tops. 3x plus 7. And then if you could, you would simplify this. But up at the top, you can't you can't factor anything out of 3x plus 7. So that is it. It is done. So whenever you're adding um, or even subtracting ex rational expressions, when the denominator is the same, it's just like with regular fractions. You just keep the denominator the same, add up the two tops. That's it. So here's a subtraction problem on these two fractions. Hey, look, guess what? They have the same denominator. If they have the same denominator, it's going to stay 25. And now subtract the tops. I got 12 minus 7. I uh, think that is 5. And that reduces to, well, 5 goes into both of those, 1 fifth. OK. So uh, when you're subtracting fractions, just like when you're adding them, if they already have the same denominator, just subtract the two tops. Huh. I, I wonder if this is going to get more difficult, like if the denominators aren't the same. Maybe. Who knows? Let's see. So uh, something similar. Here we have algebraic expression. We have two rational expressions that we're subtracting. They already have the same denominator. So we keep it the same as x minus 25. So that stays the same. Just subtract the tops in the same order that you see them. So I have 12x squared minus 7x. Now, you, you, you might think you're done here, but maybe not. Let's just see if I could factor the top. I know I could factor the top because they at least have an x in common, but nothing else. So I pull out the x, 12x minus 7 on the bottom, x minus 25. And if I could, I would cancel some stuff out, but I can't. So, really, technically, the first one would have been perfectly okay. So you could, could have left it at the first one if you saw that it wouldn't have factored in such a way to cancel out any factors. So when you're subtracting two rational expressions, if the denominators are already the same, keep them the same and just subtract the tops. Hmm. But I wonder what we're supposed to do when the denominators aren't the same. Anyway... That's pretty much what the lesson's all about. So objective one, you're going to be able to add and subtract rational expressions, whether the bottoms are the same or they're not. Take a look at this picture. You might be going, why are there a whole bunch of hot chicks, uh, um, lovely ladies, on this slide? Well, it's because you can see that every single one of them has the same thing on the bottom. 
they have the same pair of jeans and they have the same shirt. They have common denominators. So all we'd have to do if we wanted to add up those ladies is keep those, those, uh, the shirt and the pants the same and just add up their heads. <laughs> Whatever that means. Okay. So when I'm adding or subtracting rational expressions, if they have, if they have the same denominator, like denominators, you keep that denominator the same and then you add or subtract the numerators. Okay, so right down below you see an example uh, with letters, like the actual definition in, in letters. See the denominator is the same on both of these, C. So you keep it the same and you just add up the tops. If it's subtraction, you keep the denominator the same and you subtract the, uh, the tops. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and an actual example, if, if I look down at the, the very bottom there, I've got uh, 5x squared in both of the denominators, so keep it the same and just add up the tops. If you could simplify, you would, but you couldn't on that one. Um, on the next example, x plus 1 is the same on both of them, so subtract the tops. You could factor the top, like uh, there's an x squared goes in both of these, so x squared times 9x minus 1, but nothing's going to cancel, so it was okay to leave it in that first form, right? Okay, but uh, really, if the denominators aren't the same, because hmm? like, when are they going to be the same? So on this real exercise, then, when we get to the meat of it, why are we talking about meat? I don't know, we're talking about fractions. Add these two fractions, 4 sevenths and 5 twelfths. You can't just add them right now, you have to get the same denominator. One of the ways to get the same denominator is you could just multiply the two denominators together. So I could multiply the 7 times the 12 and I can get a common denominator, which means that I would multiply the top and the bottom of the first one by 12. So 12 on this one over 12. And then I would multiply the second one by 7, 7 over 7. And I get to do that because what's 12 over 12? It's 1. And 7 over 7 is also 1. So when we're really multiplying it by 1, you don't change anything. We just change the way it looks. So the first fraction here, 12 times 4 gives me 48 over, and then 12 times 7 is 84, plus, you know, uh, multiply on the top on the other ones, I get 35 also over 84. Now my denominators are the same, so 84, and just add up the tops, I get 13, 7, 8, 83 over 84. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so when adding fractions that have unlike denominators, you have to first find the LCD, least common denominator. Um, we may not have found the least common denominator, actually on this one we did, but, uh, you know, sometimes just like this one, you just times the two denominators and you have a common denominator, it may not be the least common denominator. Okay, add these two rational expressions. So just like the other one, if I just multiply the two denominators together, I can get a common denominator. May not be the least common denominator, but it's a place to start. It will always work. It's just that sometimes it might be too big. So the one on the left, we'd have to multiply it times x minus 12 on the top and the bottom. x minus 12 and x minus 12. And one on the right, you'd have to multiply by x plus 7 on the top and the bottom. x plus 7. Okay, and then across the top, on the first fraction, just distribute it out. I'd have 4x minus 12 over and uh, don't factor this out, or foil this out. Just leave it in factored form. x minus 12 times x plus 7. Okay, and then plus, now go ahead and distribute it along the top. And the reason why I'm distributing it along the top, but not the bottom, is because we're going to have to add the tops, but I keep the bottoms the same. So I have 5x plus 35. And then the same denominator, x minus 12 times x plus 7. Keep the denominators the same, and then just add up the tops. So when I add up the tops, I get a 9x, and then what's 35 minus 12, 3, oh, oh, 23? 
plus 23 all over the common denominator x minus 12 times x plus 7. All right. So, um, so whenever you add to rational expressions that don't have like denominators, you got to get an LCD. You got to get at least common denominator. One of the ways to get it is just to multiply the two denominators that you already have together. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's uh, forward here and uh, let's subtract a couple. So when I subtract these, same deal. You know what? Let's go ahead and take a break right here because this one's going to lead into us finding another way to find a common denominator. It's a little bit involved. Let's take a break, come back in the next video.